What's going on gamers? Lost in Place here, and today we're going to be talking Star Wars. That's right, just the other night they released the final trailer for the upcoming new Star Wars movie, Star Wars The Force Awakens. And I'm pumped, I'm stoked, I'm excited, man. So is the internet, so are a lot of my friends. It's been a buzz all over Twitter and the internet. People all freaking out, really excited for the new Star Wars movie. And like I said, I am as well. But I had a thought last night and it got me worried. Definitely very worried about this. And the question I'm going to pose to you guys is this. What if the new Star Wars movie sucks? All right, everybody, hold back, hold on, hold your pitchforks back. No lynching today, guys. Everybody, just chill out, all right? I didn't say it will suck. I said, what if it does suck? Because a lot of Star Wars fans out there walk around the world with blinders onto the truth. And they ignore the fact that the most recent Star Wars movies suck the big old fat dick. Simple as that. There's no way to beat around the bush on that. They absolutely suck. Now, before I get into that, let me let me lay some groundwork so you know that I know where I'm coming from and I have a little bit of experience in this matters. Yes, I'm a diehard Star Wars fan. I have been my entire life. Remember, I'm a little bit of an older guy, so I was around right after the Return of the Jedi released in theaters. And I grew up playing with Star Wars toys. I grew up doing a Darth Vader voice. I grew up playing lightsaber battles with my friends. I wanted to be Luke Skywalker. I wanted to be Han Solo. I dressed up like Darth Vader for Halloween and my childhood is largely based around the Star Wars franchise. So yes, I know everything there is to know about the Star Wars universe. Now let's flash forward 10 years from the original trilogy, and here we have the announcement that there's gonna be three new Star Wars movies, the prequels to the original series, and everyone was super excited. When they released the very first trailer to The Phantom Menace, I nearly creamed my shorts. My god, they had the one evil Jedi with the double-edged lightsaber hilt. Man, did that blow my mind. Absolutely crazy. And we were pumped. And then, sure enough, the weekend came. The long-anticipated prequel, The Phantom Menace, released. I was there, opening weekend. I, I still remember the, the anticipation amongst the crowd. People there in costumes, plastic lightsabers, the thrill that our childhood dreams were returning. We see Darth Vader as a child, a young Anakin Skywalker, and we're finally going to see the tragic saga of Darth Vader. Then that's where the prequels failed miserably. Now, I want to be clear about this. The prequel movies, episodes 1, 2, and 3, they were not terrible films. I, I mean, I actually enjoyed them on some sort of level of popular entertainment. If they were standalone space fantasies, they would have been fine. The problem is that they grievously undermine what made the original trilogy so great. Now let's look back at the original movies, the first episodes 4, 5, and 6. Now the original trilogy, taken as a whole, was about the redemption of Darth Vader. Now rarely has a villain penetrated public consciousness to such an extent. Beyond the costume and the booming voice, what elevated Vader to those mythological heights was his backstory. Darth Vader was once a great man who experienced a tragic fall into darkness. What remained was a disfigured fusion of a man and machine, entirely consumed by evil. This is stuff of legends, people. So when the prequels were announced, that's what I expected to see, the fall of a great man. Uh, the first prequel was disappointing in this regard, but we were able to forgive it because it set up the story, leaving room for two films full of the great man and his fall. And so we waited. But that great man never came. Instead, we were treated to the tale of a whiny, arrogant brat who continuously defied his teachers and thumbed his nose at tradition. We were expecting a wise and powerful Jedi Master. Instead, we were given a one-dimensional caricature of Maverick from Top Gun, minus the coolness. Now, Anakin Skywalker, the way he is in the prequels, he can best be summarized with one word. Annoying. He's self-centered, self-serving, and ultimately trivial. I just wanted him to go away. The way Anakin Skywalker was portrayed in these movies, there's no way he was ever going to be badass enough to beat Darth Vader. I mean, really, he acts like a whiny bitch all the time. He makes no sense in the slightest. Half of his dialogue is just retarded. Well, from my point of view, the Jedis are evil. What the hell? What? Anakin, come on. He spends a whole 10 minute dialogue talking about why he hates sand in one of his scenes with Amidala while he's trying to woo her. Speaking of, Padme Amidala, yes, she's hot in the movie, I'll give her that. But the dialogue between the two of them, the love story, the quote unquote love story that goes on between these guys is so fake, so contrived, so disgustingly fake. Here's a dose of some of this Shakespearean romance in this film. Anakin to Padme says, you look beautiful. I only look beautiful because I'm so in love. No, you look beautiful because I'm so in love with you. So love has blinded you? 
I mean, see what I mean? It's it's uninteresting. It's retarded. It's no one talks that way. Uh, Jar Jar Binks. I mean, what else do I have to say about this character? He is absolutely the most ridiculous character ever to have been immortalized on the movie screen, and that includes children's television. This character is so ridiculous, I wanted to bang my head against the wall after listening to him speak for more than five minutes. I mean, his inclusion in these prequels was an obvious attempt to further the toyable aspects of the franchise. To make matters worse, the first episode one, they climax the movie with an army of Jar Jars catapulting goddamn bubbles at an army of stupid looking CGI robots on a grassy knoll. I, I mean, come on people, what was going on in the boardroom when they came up with that plot decision? Now let's talk about the CGI. I mean, absolute overkill with the CGI. I honestly felt like I was watching some bizarre cartoon half the time. I mean, these movies are less than 10 years old, but go watch one of them now and try to fool yourself into thinking half the stuff you're seeing is real. You can't. You can't. It's so obviously fake and ridiculous. They just went way overkill with the CGI, and I really hope that this new movie doesn't make the same mistake. How about Darth Maul? Yes, he looked badass in the trailer, and that was definitely one of the moments that hooked me in, hook, line, and sinker, once I saw the first trailer for Phantom Menace. Man, this guy with the dual-edged lightsaber? Oh, goddamn, this looks badass. But how much movie time did he actually get? I think he was in the movie for five goddamn minutes. And he has one line. Yes, my master. That's it. That's all he says. One of the most interesting evil villains that could maybe come up to the level of Darth Vader, and he gets five minutes of screen time. Only to be cut in half by a goddamn beardless ponytail wearing Obi-Wan Kenobi. And who, by the way, you and McGregor, I love you, but you are not Obi-Wan Kenobi in my eyes. Never will be. How about R2-D2 and C-3PO? I mean, how can you go wrong with those guys, right? Well, let's see. C-3PO was created by Darth Vader. Yes, C-3PO was built by Darth Vader. Why? What is the point of having him do that? Makes absolutely zero sense whatsoever in the grand scheme of things. And R2-D2. R2-D2 can fly. What? What? He can fly? Who decided that would be a good idea? I want to know, and I want to go to their house and slap him upside the head. Why would you make R2-D2 fly? It makes absolutely zero sense in the grand scheme of things. And also, why in the world did he get a medal at the end of episode one? He did what he's supposed to do. He flew in the X-Wing. That's what he's supposed to do. It's not worthy of a medal. You don't give a medal to an android for nothing, for doing its job. Then we get to the third movie, episode three of the prequel, and that's probably the least horrible one of the three, but that's not saying much. But remember Darth Sidious, his evil, cunning plan, Order 66, the culmination of his entire life's work and his slow-burning plan for the annihilation of the Jedi Order? And what was his plan? Everyone assassinate the Jedi when they're not looking at the same time. Really? Really? So you're telling me every single Jedi in the galaxy was just defeated by a small group of stormtroopers who shoot their lasers at them, who normally can't hit the broad side of a barn with those things, but yet they're managed to be able to kill every single Jedi in the galaxy. I mean, come on, people. I think my little sister could come up with a better plot idea than that. Look, let me just say it may sound like I'm hating on Star Wars in general. I'm not. I am a diehard fan. But I also take these movies seriously. And I invest a lot of emotional stock into these, and I really care that it's going to be a quality product. After the most recent letdowns, the episodes 1, 2, and 3, I'm a little skeptical. I'm a little bit worried. Now, we're turning over the new movie to J.J. Abrams, which he has an interesting track record, to say the least. He did a reboot of the original Star Trek, and it was actually really freaking good, was re reviewed very well, and I'd be happy with that kind of quality of a movie. Now, he did another Star Wars, which was actually not so hot. Uh, kind of a letdown after the first one. So he's got a track record of about one for two. He's batting 500. <laughs> so this is the guy that we're handing over the Star Wars franchise to. Or at least this next episode. And there, there will be more episodes, people. This is why I'm most worried and concerned, what if this does suck? Because this movie, The Force Awakens, is going to leap off the Star Wars franchise. We've got a whole new trilogy coming. We've got spin-offs coming. They're talking about potential Han Solo spin-offs. We're talking about Bubba Fett spin-offs. And there are going to be Star Wars movies out the ass, starting all stemming from The Force Awakens. And that is why it is so critical, so important that this movie be done right, be done properly. Otherwise, a lot of these younger kids who are just jumping into Star Wars now are not gonna, are gonna miss out on what really made the franchise what it is today, what's so wonderful about it. 
it's it's a space western people it's not some glorified cgi fest or some doofy love story it is a space western movie with a good side and a bad side the dark side the light side the epic battle between good and evil so jj abrams i hope you're watching this man because if you are oh boy please don't let it suck man come on stay true to the source material stay true to the original trilogy Stay true to what made the franchise what it is today. I'm not talking episodes one, two, or three. I'm talking about four, five, and six, baby. You can do this, JJ. I believe in you. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a like. And but more importantly, leave a comment below on your thoughts of the original um, on the Star Wars series. Specifically, what you thought of the episodes one, two, and three. If you agree with me that they sucked as bad as they did. So, guys, again, I hope to God it's going to be great. But you got to prepare yourself for the worst, ladies and gentlemen. You got to be prepared. Let's just hope. Let's cross our fingers. I'm lost in place and I'm out of here.